What's up guys, it's my first video so I figured I'd start off good on this channel and do a overview of my PC build. Now this is the first PC that I've ever built myself so keep in mind when you're watching the video that things like cable management and some of the parts aren't as great as you would see in other videos and other builds. One because of money, I mean I'm a teenager in, in high school so money's not overly abundant for all the latest stuff like I'm not jam packed with a NVIDIA uh, GeForce, GTX, 900, something like that, that's a thousand dollars. So overall this PC costs around 900. Things like the processor are pretty good, and even the graphics card is pretty good with the processor being a Intel i5 2500K, which is pretty good for the majority of stuff that I do. There's a few things I had to uh, kind of go down on. There's no SSD, so boot time is slower than I would like it to be, but that's something I can either upgrade soon or just save up for a better build but I needed a new PC so and I had enough money so I figured I'd do it myself and generally if you got this on like iBuyPower.com or CyberPower PC it would cost around I'd say 1200 when I was looking at it so I figured save three four hundred dollars it's worth it alright so in here I don't know if you guys can see it too good I'll move it a little bit closer I have Okay, I'm just taking it off. I have an OCZ 700 watt power supply, which is pretty good for the graphics card. There's only one graphics card in the computer, so 700 watts is more than enough. Really, I could have gotten by with 600, but I like this one. And it seems like with power supplies, uh, I by the way, I bought all of this on Newegg.com. It's really the best place, in my opinion. Uh, Amazon has some good stuff, but Newegg is probably the best. And it's a semi-modular power supply. And I went with this one just because the reviews were better than a lot of them. So, semi-modular means that most of the cords, uh, most of the power connections are modular and you can take them out, but the the main 24 pin, whoa, I don't know what happened, come back, alright, I don't know where I hit that, but, uh, so the main power connector, the 24 pin power connector, I don't know if you guys can see it, the lighting is pretty bad in here. Uh, going into the motherboard for the um, the main power for the motherboard is hooked in and you can't take it out. That's not a big deal though. And it's a smaller case. It's a, uh, what is it? A Cooler Master Storm Scout. And personally, I like the case. I think it's good. It's a uh, an ATX mid-tower. It's pretty good size. It has, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it as no, probably not. The lighting is really, really bad in here. Actually, you know what? Let me turn this on and see if I can get something more out. Maybe a little bit better. Okay, so there's one fan on the top. You still can't really see it because it's on the top. Uh, then a red LED here and a red LED in the front. Now, what I really hate is that the red LED in the front, the red LED is fine. The fan doesn't work. So... I found that out kind of after warranty. I made this build a little while ago. Honestly, for the trouble of going through a warranty and having it sent back and then replaced, it's not even worth it because fans you can find for like 10 bucks for LED fans. And they're probably better than the case ones that come with here. But, yeah, it is what it is. So the main things, like I said, the, uh, the video card I didn't uh, kind of skimp on. And it's a... Radeon HD 6870, which is pretty good in my opinion for the gaming I can do. Things like StarCraft that aren't crazy graphics card intensive, it recommends extreme settings. So I'm happy with that and I get 100 FPS. So you can't really go wrong there. And like I said, i5 2500K. K means I can overclock it, but as you can see I'm using the stock CPU cooler. And in my next build, I'm going to get a Corsair H100, so a liquid cooling uh, CPU cooler, meaning that I can overclock without any issue at all. But right now, I can't do that because I went pretty simple and just, you know, again, money was a big thing in here, and that that's one of the main problems. Going on to RAM, I have a DDR3 1600, I forget what brand it is, uh, oh, G-Skill. And 8 gigs, 4 gig, uh, 2 six of it. So that's pretty good. Then, as I said, I got the uh, 
the pretty good double dissipation. It's from XFX. I, I like their graphics card. They were pretty good. Next time, uh, basically yesterday I was going through and I was making my dream build, like on Newegg, uh, building up my shopping cart. Came out to $2,500, so might be a while before I get it. And then I'd be getting a GTX 690, and there's only one brand that even makes those, so. <laughs> but that'll be a while. It's a $1,000 uh, $1, card. So that'll be what I get next time. But for now, the, uh, the 6870 works perfect for me, even though it's their previous generation of cards. Going on, I just have a pretty basic optical drive. Nothing, uh, nothing too special with it. It's uh, not Blu-ray. It was only, I don't know, like seventeen dollars. So pretty simple with that. One thing I do like about this case is that when it comes to uh, like kind of moving around, there is a handle on top, which is kind of a nice uh, addition, and it looks pretty good too. Uh, other than that, okay, so the one thing I do really, really, really hate is that in order to make the build work for my price range, I had to, I mean, I figured that of all things to kind of skimp and not spend as much as I should on, it would be the hard drive, and I don't know why I decided that, but I figured that going for, say, a 6850 and a better hard drive was better to get the 6870 now and then the hard drive later. So this is just a refurbished, I think it's Seagate maybe, nope it's Hitachi, but I think they're partnered with Western, Gi Western Digital for uh, the hard drives, and it's 500 gigs so it's not even a lot of space and it's refurbished, it was like $45, the thing is about as loud as possible, when you go on to Windows Index on the computer, I'm using Windows Ultimate by the way, uh, 7.8 out of 8 on every part of the PC except for the hard drive, which is like 5.3. So and that's really the one downside to the PC overall. And for regular specs, it's pretty good. I'm using a wireless N uh, Sebren, I think is the brand. It's like 30 bucks on Amazon, not too bad, for my Wi-Fi because unfortunately in this room, and I'll show a setup of my room in a later video, unfortunately in here, downstairs and in other rooms are, but there's no actual two-walled ethernet connection, so I can't get wired connection, I have to use wireless. Fortunately, the router and modem and just the internet connection in my area is pretty good, so Wi-Fi does fine, and uh, normally, most of the time, I get uh, pretty A- minus to A- plus rating on my download and upload speed for speedtest.net. Which is uh, which is pretty good. So, going over in general, I like the build. It's uh, it's pretty good for my first build, in my opinion. Two things I do need to fix are, of course, the hard drive <laughs> refurbished. Just don't get refurbished and spend the extra little bit of money. You can get like a one terabyte really good hard drive for one hundred, and then one twenty if you have that to spend. You can get a uh, a black hard drive, which they're the fastest kind, of course. Uh, 500 gigs is fine, and then pair with an SSD, and that that's really my my ideal build for it. If I was able to do that, I would have. And then the CPU cooler, it runs really hot, and unfortunately because the uh, the front fan is not working, the overall system runs hotter than it probably should. And under extreme loads, like I can't even run um oh what's it called just the the heat tests like that to see if uh, it can handle extreme loads it can't right now mainly because of the CPU cooler but also because the front fan does not work exhaust that's that is perfect the top fan uh, up here it's a 140 millimeter and that's intake mainly cooling which is nice it does help cool the uh, the graphics card which is good in general it has actually three heat psych heat psych heat sink um, on it, they're copper or whatever they're made out of, and there's three of them, so it's really, it, it stays pretty cool, there's actually two fans, you can't see them unfortunately, but they're pretty good, it's nice and quiet in my opinion, so if you're going for kind of a cheaper graphics card, if you're on Newegg, then you can find this for like 160 and then there's even a mail-in rebate, so XFX 6870 uh, Radeon, it's pretty good in my opinion for a, uh, a cheaper build, but not 
you know, uh, losing too much performance. And other than that, there's not too much. I This is the build in general. Uh, in case you want to see the front of the case. It's pretty good. It fits on my desk. Uh, good, in my opinion. And it's nice because it's an ATX mid. Next time I'm going to get a full. Not because I need a full to fit the uh, the different PC parts. But mainly because that with a full, you just have a lot more room. Airflow is much better. This is mesh in the front. This is not the best camera, just to let you know, so some things might not show up, and when I'm looking at it on here, it does not show up that great. But this is all mesh on the front, which is really nice for airflow. Just, you want to go with mesh, you don't want to have a solid front, or just a really a dense front that doesn't allow airflow in. Because having airflow come into the front, and then just the, the simple way of airflow, having it come into the front, and then having a good fan in the back, it's just really important to keep everything cool, especially things like, that's why I wish the uh, the hard drive, not the hard drive, but the, the fan in the front was better because for the hard drive, it would keep it cooler. I'm guessing that would probably solve some of my problems with uh, the noise that it has, but I don't know. I guess that's what you get for going cheap on, on some things and especially going refurbished. So that's about it. And uh, like I said, I'll be showing you guys the overall build. I didn't open the back just because uh, <laughs> uh, I, I like the back. Cable management is horrible. And then getting the case back on because uh, even with this kind of bow out, uh, the cables just, they, they kind of push it back out. So putting uh, the case back on even with the thumb screws, really a pain. So I didn't take that off. <laughs> You're not missing much by not seeing it. Uh, just a bunch of wires and stuff. And yeah, so that's about it. This is the first video on my channel. Not going to get a lot of views. I understand that. But please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And there will be a lot more videos to come. Hopefully, in a timely manner, I'm able to upgrade my PC. I'll do another build. And then, unfortunately, what I should have done is shown you guys how to build the computer. That was one of the most important and kind of nerve-wracking things for me. Because you're buying $900 components or more for most PC builds. If it's your first time building a PC, it's extremely nerve-wracking because if you mess something up, there's 99% of the time, even if you get uh, your parts through a good brand or a good uh, retailer like Newegg, there's almost no recourse. So if you mess it up, it's messed up, you paid for it, you can't even get your money back. So that kind of was uh, a little bit nerve-wracking and I wish I could have shown you guys how to build a PC. I'll be doing that in a later video at some point because it was such a uh, nerve-wracking and important thing for me to find out. There was a few videos on there, but so, I mean, it is what it is, and I was able to do it, and it worked fine. Uh, like I said, just some PC specs need to be a little bit upgraded. But other than that, it's all good, so please like and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.